really excited about getting this game into players' hands and letting them experience this massive world. A main cornerstone of D4 is play your way. As a player continues to advance through the story and into the end game, they'll unlock a ton of brand new activities that provide meaningful progression, no matter their play style. Players will be able to keep progressing in the narrative of the game. Alongside that, the whole team has worked on crafting a variety of different experiences players can pursue. We're going to have an entire world of Sanctuary for our players to offer. There's going to never be an absence of something to do. After the player has finished the campaign, there's a lot more game to go and participate in. They gain access to a special, what we call capstone dungeon that they have to complete. Once they're able to finish this capstone dungeon, they're going to gain access to the first world tier. As you complete the world tier, it will open up the opportunity for you to go into your next world tier. That involves unlocking powerful loot, new items, and more advantages for your player to have a better opportunity to end the game. Whether you're a fan of dungeons, PvP, or just roaming around the world, there's a way to continue your Diablo adventure long after hitting max level. As your character continues to grow in power, you'll start with the skill tree and expand out into the Paragon system. A lot of the choices the players make are grounded on skills themselves and the fantasies associated with those skills. The Paragon board is a place where we allow you to have a lot more depth, a lot more customization, many more options as you go. You can rotate the board so you can choose a different path if you're like, I want to do more strength-based things, or I want these particular boons or glyphs. You can chart your path through it, and they're really a way for you to keep expanding your character and making it uniquely yours. Similar to the Paragon boards is the Codex of Power. It's an in-game system that holds the aspects related to the character. You are able to complete a dungeon, and they will have a chance to drop an aspect that you can pick up. And what this allows players to do is take items they're finding in the world and make them more powerful, turn them into legendary items. It's really special to discover what kind of playstyle really means the most to you. Every part of Sanctuary is fulfilling and satisfying. Dungeons in particular are really close to my heart. Nightmare Dungeons are going to give the players the opportunity to experience a dungeon that they might have already experienced in their past playthroughs. They'll enter the dungeon with a found sigil that alters the playstyle and the intensity of the dungeon. They're more difficult and they have additional objectives and then they also have affixes which add a degree of difficulty for you and your group to work through. One of my favorite affixes that you can find in Nightmare Dungeons is actually called Hellgate. Occasionally, these portals will open up throughout the area that will just pour out different monsters that aren't native to that region for you to also be dealing with while you're trying to handle everything else inside the dungeon. There's over 120 dungeons to play through and find in Diablo 4, and any one of them can become a Nightmare Dungeon by finding a Nightmare Sigil and then using it to activate the nightmare version of that dungeon space. Everything's a little darker, everything's more difficult. It's going to add a little bit of a twist of flavor on your particular dungeon. There's some targeted activities in Diablo 4 that suit what you're feeling in the mood for. The Force of Hell are starting to have more influence in certain parts of Sanctuary in the vast interconnected overworld of the experience. And as the players are going into Helltide areas, they're going to find even more powerful monsters. And by killing them, they'll be able to gain these special shards they can take to go and use to purchase these big rewards that are available at these caches that are found littered throughout Helltide areas. The sky darkens and the rivers run red, meteors fall from the sky, and the monsters get harder. We really want to create new experiences for the players. There's one I really like called Whispers of the Dead, which you get from the Tree of Whispers. The Tree of Whispers is grim and a little gruesome, but it's also something mystically haunting and kind of beautiful. The tree has a little bit of a grudge against our players, and it would like for them to go serve its needs. So you're going to go serve these bounties, gather different rewards, different items, and bring them back to the tree in hopes that it can exchange you something really meaningful. Maybe you're going to go to the Fractured Peaks and take out some werewolves that are rampaging in a town. They're contained activities that you can do alone or in a group. We really wanted to create variety for people to be able to spend time where they wanted to in the world. It's very cool the way it's been put together, and I can't wait for people to see it, to be honest. In Diablo 4, we have a focus on the world of Sanctuary. And there are parts of that world that we call the Fields of Hatred, where Lilith's presence in Sanctuary has begun to seep through and manifest these poisonous areas throughout the world. When players go to these regions, they get to engage in player versus player conflict. These offer opportunities for the player to collect shards. But there is a little bit of a catch. In order to get these shards back to town, you will need to purify them. 
other players will definitely know that you're attempting to purify your shards. So you'd better be prepared to fight if you're going to be playing any PvP and be prepared that you might lose some stuff in the meantime. Once they've got the purified shards, they can take these, go back to nearby towns to sell them, and then use that to buy a whole bunch of like interesting cosmetic items and rewards. It's a place for people who really love PvP and want to still get loot and still increase their character's power. If that's the way they want to play, they can. Launch is just the beginning. One of the things we're really focused on is creating a living, breathing set of updates for players to engage with after the game has gone live. It's really just going to be a way to keep coming back and experiencing more Diablo 4 in fresh ways. We're really eager to hear all of your experiences and just enjoy the entire story with you all.